Now selecting in Photoshop is extremely important because Photoshop's workflow for the most part works in two steps where you want to make a selection of something and then you want to edit it or you want to apply something to that selection. And one thing that works hand in hand with selecting is masking. And so we're going to go over both of those in this tutorial and go over a bunch of different ways of how to select things and how to mask things. Now we have an image of a piece of artwork that I did and scanned in and we're going to mask him out so he's on a transparent background and that will allow us to um, put a new background in and also be able to paint on the positive part of the mask and um, kind of stylize it and just do a complete illustration from this. Now before we get to this I just want to go over basic selecting first um, because that's getting into masking and let's go over the selecting parts first and then we could go ahead into the masking part. So I just created a solid here to make a white background and then I have a layer here for our quick demonstration of the different selection types. Now in our toolbox or our tools panel the most basic selection type that we have is the geometric selection which is your rectangle marquee, your elliptical, single row, and single column. We could just draw a square and go ahead and we could just do a fill and there we created a selection and we filled it. So there's that workflow of making a selection and editing it or making a selection and applying something to it. Now let's just go ahead and do the same using our circle or our ellipse. And then we make the selection and then we fill. I'm going to go back to the, the um, marquee for a second and do a quick demonstration of some of the options that you have while you're doing this. So let's go ahead and fill this. And one thing you could do with selections is you can add and subtract to selections. So by holding down the Alt, you can go ahead and subtract part of a selection. or you can use shift and add to a selection. Now there's also some selection options. Um, one thing to remember is that the command or control key and clicking on your layer will always just select the pixels that are on your layer. And I'm just going to make a selection. Now right clicking you have deselect, select inverse, Feather, Refine Edge. Now feathering in Photoshop basically allows you to feather your edge or blur your edge. So if we set this to 10, you'll see that our edge is blurred. Now it doesn't really give you a good representation in the actual selection. You have to do a fill to see this. So if we fill this with black, you can now see that our edge is blurred and that is feathering. Now let's go back to our selection and let's go under Select and then we could do Modify border. Now what border is going to do is create a border around your selection and we could just say border is 10 and again you'll see this happen to your selection but you don't really get a good representation of it here you have to do some sort of fill to see it. So deselecting it you can see that there is our border. Going back to our selection select modify smooth and what that is going to do is tighten your selection some more, but um, we don't really have a good example of this here. We'll get into that a little bit later. But let's look at Modify again and do Expand. And so what Expand is going to do is draw your selection out around your selection by the input value you give it. So if we say 10, it made our selection larger by 10 pixels. And again, you have to fill it to see it. And then there's contract, which is the opposite, which it's going to make your selection draw inward by the pixels that you give it. Let me give it something obvious this time. So you could see that our selection is smaller because it contracted it. And we went over feather already. And so there's some more options for you under the select menu. So those are our geometric selections. Again, rectangular marquee, 
elliptical marquee, single row, single column. Now let's take a look at some others, and I'm going to jump back to our original image. And we're going to look at the lasso tool. Now the lasso tool and the polygon tool and the magnetic lasso tool, these are considered freehand selections. So with our lasso, I'm going to go ahead, let me zoom in here, and you could just draw where you want a selection to be. And you could see, just by freehand, I just drew around him and made a selection. Moving on to the polygonal lasso tool. Now this you just use a stepped click and you could go ahead and click steps around your selection or the area you want to select. And there you have your selection that you made with the polygon tool. Now the next option is the magnetic lasso tool. And this tool is generally used for something that has high contrast where it can figure out um, based off of like a color range and contrast where the selection is going to be isolated to. So let's zoom in a little closer here. And what you do is sort of click and drag around and you can see that this tool is finding the contrast of the line and it's making a selection based on that. Now I'm not going to go around this whole thing right now but you sort of, it sort of finds it itself based off the contrast that's in the image. And then you have your selection there. Now if we go ahead and let's just mask this really quick. You make a selection and then you edit it or you apply something to it. So I'm just going to make a mask. So you can see right there, it did a pretty good job of finding the outline and then masking out the rest. Now the only thing with this is that it's kind of time consuming and you have to spend the time to go around your image and that's all good if you have the time but sometimes you don't and you're trying to do stuff fast and quick and you don't want to do that. And that's how the magnetic lasso tool works and that's considered an edge based selection. Now moving on we have our color based selections. So I'm going to zoom in again. And we can use our click, quick selection tool, which sort of paint around where you want the selection to go. And then it's going to use some color range information to find out where you want the selection. And holding down shift, of course, adds to your selection. And you can see that the color range is isolated to the gray here and not to the white. And go ahead and turn on a mask for that. Actually we want to invert it first. And we could see that did an okay job, but it's not perfect. And that is the color based selection for the quick selection tool and now the magic wand tool where it finds a range of colors and it makes a selection based off that by clicking it. So now we have our tolerance and in our option bar we have our tolerance and our anti-alias and our contiguous and our sample all layers. Now the wand tool will work if you have sample all layers turned on and you have multiple layers stacked up. It will basically select color ranges based off of the combination of all your layers rather than just the local isolated pixels on that layer. So the tolerance is a value that you entered that sort of defines a range of colors. So if we put one in 
and make a selection. It's just going to select that one gray color that it's using, or that it's seeing. And then if we up this to, say, 8, I usually work in increments of 8 with this. You can see that there, our selections are a little bit larger, but it's still not broad enough to make a huge selection. If we go to 16, you'll see that we start getting more. And then we could go up to 32, which is kind of a default, and we get a pretty big range. Now we could go ahead and double this and make it 64, and you can see that it's selecting most of the image because of that color range. So that's another way to make selections, and that's your color-based selection tools. And that brings us to our next method of selecting, which is the path tool, or creating a path to make a selection. And for creating a path, we use our pen tool, and then we also use our path selection and direct selection tools. Now in our paths panel, we have new path, and I'm going to go in this layer and I'm going to turn on this right now and sort of diffuse the drawing so we can see our path a little bit better. So the pen tool allows you to create precise curves um, along the outline of any shape or any path. They can be open or closed. You could control the curves by plotting a point and then dragging a handle in the direction of the way that you want the curve to go. Now, there's a direction point and a direction line. So plotting points places your point, and then using the direction line or the handles helps create the direction and the tangency of your curve. Now, this takes a little bit of practice, but this is more about selections and not about the paths. So we're just going to jump ahead to the selection and then our mask that we applied and go from there. And while doing selecting and masking, I also like to put just a solid color layer behind my object so I could see the quality of the selection. And I usually grab something kind of obnoxious or something that has enough contrast and enough color to see any haloing and to see the quality of the edge and um, go from there. So right now you can see that my pen tool, although very precise, did not get exactly around everything. So with that selected, you can always go in with the mask and clean that up. But we're just talking about the pen tool here. And we're going to delete our layer mask. And then move on to our next selection type. Now our next selection type is color range. Now under select, you have color range. And so it sort of works like the magic wand tool. Um, some of the under the hood and the engine of what it's using is kind of similar. And you can do sampled colors. And we can use our different ones here. We have our eyedropper, which will select one color range. And you can see there's our fuzziness. And then it's showing our selection there. Or a range of colors where you click and drag and you could add add in multiple colors and you could get your selection that way and you could subtract with that as well or you can invert or you could just say midtones and it's for selecting a broad range of colors. Um, so maybe if you have an image of a sky or something that has a bunch of blues, you can use the select color range to select those blues and use these tools here. So this is just another way to do selections. And let's just quickly select the gray here. And you have your fuzziness. And your range. And I'm just going to grab my grays here. And a range is 100% of the image. And the fuzziness. 
and so you can also display your image here or your selection and the selection preview which is going to give you a grayscale representation of what's selected your black mat your white mat or your quick mask now the red is what you're selecting so I kinda like to look at this because it tells me what I'm selecting and if we hit OK you can go ahead and see that it grabbed all of this gray that we selected in the color range and you could see that yeah it did mask out all of that gray but then since it's a color range and it's spread among the whole image we got our grays that are inside as well when we don't really want that for this particular uh, selection type we just want an outline around the guy now that we looked at our different types of selection tools and we sort of have to evaluate what we want to mask out what we want to select and what our end goal is now for this particular image we just want to mask out the background around him and have you know a positive and a negative mask of the background being black and him with his outline being white and so create a mask for that so we can use it for painting and also replacing the background that he's on and going from there so we went over the different selection tools and we're just gonna have to figure out which one works best for our solution here